Great, so we're just going to give a very short um, presentation and a bit of an overview of some of the work we're doing uh, in UCD to support uh, our diverse students. So I suppose first of all, we're going to talk about that diversity in UCD. I'm going to give an overview, very brief overview as to what we're doing in the University for All initiative. And then Julie, who is our disability officer, is going to talk to you about some of the supports that are available to students and what our ethos of support is for those student groups. So for those of you who aren't familiar with UCD, just to give you a bit of um, a bit of an overview, really. So we have uh, over 30,000 students in total. Um, our undergraduate population is just over 17,000. And within that undergraduate population, we've got nearly a third of those students are international students and almost a third are what we would call diverse or from access and widening participation groups. So that includes students with disabilities, low income students, mature students, students from ethnic minority backgrounds, lone parents, students who are refugees and asylum seekers. So all of those groups are target groups as set out in the National Access Plan. And UCD's target um, are key performance indicators that we would reach 33%. So in order for us to do that, we've, um, I suppose we've a lot of different initiatives. One of them would be all of our supplementary admissions route, uh, routes. So we have the disability access route to education, the higher education access route for students who are from socioeconomically disadvantaged backgrounds. We have mature entry pathways. We have some university access programs. We have open learning, which opens up the existing modules in UCD, which can then lead on to a pathway of full-time degree study. Um, and we also have lifelong learning and other part-time programs as well. We also offer the largest scholarship program for access students um, in Ireland. Um, so again, making sure that while we support admission into the university, we're also supporting students once they're actually in UCD. So that just gives you an idea in terms of our bigger picture in terms of diversity. So when we look in the area of disability support, so here I'm showing you the picture from the past 10 years of students who've come forward to avail of disability support. So we know this isn't a reflection of the diversity in the student population overall, but it's just those students who are um, disclosing a disability and seeking support and who have a diagnosis. And I think that's an important point to make as well. So you can see that in 2010-11, there were 710 students in UCD seeking support. Um, and last year that was 1907 students. So really um, quite a lot of growth uh, throughout those 10 years. And there's, I suppose, lots of different reasons for that. One of them would be the increase in the disability access route to education um, for school leavers. But also I think um, supports have become more uh, widely recognized in the university. Students are getting supports earlier at second level and then um, seeking those supports when they come to university. But this is just to give you a picture in terms of the supports that are provided in UCD. But in terms of the growth in numbers, I'm showing you two of the largest groups here and that's students with mental health conditions and students with specific learning difficulties, it's primarily dyslexia. Um, but to look at the group of students with mental health difficulties, many of whom have a co-diagnosis, um, it's gone from 74 10 years ago to 505 last year. And again, these are the students coming forward um, seeking support. So quite a significant growth. Um, in terms of other diverse groups, I'm showing you here the numbers of students uh, with ADD or ADHD diagnosis, autistic spectrum disorder, or students with developmental coordination disorder or dyspraxia. And again, quite a large growth over the past 10 years within those groups um, of students seeking support. So in that context then, so we know UCD is a diverse university. We have a diverse student population. So what do we do about that? to make sure that the university is ready. So the University for All initiative is really about changing the conversation from getting the student ready for university to getting the university ready for the students. So quite often the conversation around access and widening participation is about admission routes and getting students in the door. Um, but we're very much focused now on making sure that the university is as inclusive as possible. So we want all students to feel as though they belong here in UCD. And you can see in some of the pictures here on this slide, some of our access leaders, some of whom avail of uh, disability support through our service. Um, but we very much like to keep the student at the centre of all of the work that we do. We get feedback continuously from our students and they help us to make UCD a welcoming place for incoming students. So we want to dispel this myth of a kind of traditional or average student. 
um, and really embrace the diversity and give visibility to the diversity in the student population as well. So our registrar famously says a student is a student in that we want our students to come in and really have a positive experience in UCD. So if there's a science student who's availing of disability support, they're primarily a science student and we support them in their own context rather than having them only supported within a disability service. So we want to avoid as much as possible students having to wear labels if they don't want to. Um, and to make sure that we're mainstreaming supports and making the institution as equitable, as inclusive and as flexible as possible. We know there's no one size fits all solution. So one of the tools that we use to help us in the University for All initiative, which is um, really about every single program in the university developing to be more inclusive is our toolkit for inclusive higher education institutions. So what this does is helps us to start the conversation through a self-assessment exercise with program teams or um, college groups where they talk about, well, how inclusive is our teaching and learning? How inclusive are our policies, our strategies, how inclusive is our built environment, our technology infrastructure and our student supports and services. So that everybody has this conversation about how inclusive are we at the moment and we can identify areas where there's good practice and identify areas really importantly where we need to do some work and develop some projects from there. So we're starting that process now. We've done these toolkit workshops with a number of program groups and we'll be continuing them in the next academic year as well. COVID, as you can imagine, interrupted our plans, unfortunately. So one of the big areas of progression within UCD is around universal design for learning. And you might be already familiar with this image, but the idea really is that we promote universal design for learning, which at its core is about flexibility in teaching, learning and assessment. So that as many students as possible can be accommodated in that bottom level of the of the pyramid, which you see there. And it means students don't have to come and avail of specific support. So a good example might be use of a smaller exam venue. So that's probably our most commonly used support. And Julie's probably going to talk about it in a couple of minutes. But what can we do to avoid students having to be segregated from the rest of the student population? Well, we can eliminate timed exams where they don't actually, um, where they aren't necessary for us to measure the learning outcomes. And uh, Professor Colin Scott spoke about the changes that happened post COVID. And one of the really positive changes that happened was we no longer had two and a half thousand students sitting in an event hall to do exams three times a day, six days a week for two weeks, um, which as you can imagine, causes a lot of stress for a lot of students. So if we can eliminate it now, I'm hoping that we can see further elimination of those timed exams. And again, eliminating the need for students to have to go down the route of seeking a separate support. So we promote universal design for learning. Um, we run the National Forum Digital Badge in Universal Design for Learning, which I co-created with AHEAD. And actually just at one o'clock today, we had our last webinar for this national rollout. So we have um, about 650 educators across Irish higher and further education who are going to be awarded that badge at the end of this semester. So we're really hoping there'll be quite a big impact in terms of the sector um, in Ireland. So I'm gonna hand you over to Julie now. Thanks, Lisa. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we support our, our students within our unit. Um, and I suppose the obvious thing is reasonable accommodations for students who disclose a disability. But we're also very aware of the issues that some students have. Well, all students have, in fact, with the transition um, to third into third level education. And for some students, that transition is more challenging than for others. So we've designed a range of supports to try and um, make that a little bit easier. The first one is a tailored welcome program. So we know we have all our entry pathways and we know a, a lot about these students or a lot of them um, before they even make it to um, UCD. So we invite them to come onto the campus a little bit earlier, earlier than everyone else. So before the main um, orientation, which all students go to, including this cohort. Um, so they come when the campus is quiet and they're met by access leaders from their programme. And Lisa showed you some of the photographs of our access leaders in her in her slides with the photographs earlier. Um, and they meet some other students from within their programme. They get inf information about what's going to happen, what it's going to be like to be a student in UCD. And they get a lot of information um, about the supports that are available to them. We also run then a series of academic skills workshops and we've access to online materials and these cover all the topics that we know that students um, potentially struggle with the sorts of things that are unique to higher education, such as maybe referencing your essays that might not be 
familiar to people who haven't studied um, beyond maybe second level uh, to date. Um, this year we've moved all of our academic skills workshops onto our virtual learning environment, so absolutely any student can benefit from these. They don't need to be linked in um, with our department or to disclose anything. Students also have access to a dedicated disability advisor, and that's so that they have somebody to come and discuss their issues with or any challenges that they experience within the environment so that we can assist them um, as challenges arise. We have um, digital ambassadors that work in our centre and they're available to students to help with all of the digital skills that students are required to have. We have this assumption that the students are digital natives or many of them are and in fact a lot of them are very experienced in social media but much less so in things like email attachments and plagiarism software and other things that they have to use um, in higher education. We also offer students one to one learning support for those who struggle with the transition to um, third level education and we've one to one occupational therapy support for students as well. Um, and that's particularly targeted at students with um, autistic spectrum disorders so that they, they can really identify some of the challenges that they have and work on a one to one basis with somebody to overcome those challenges so that they can operate within the university independently um, going forward. So every student who discloses a disability in UCD has a one to one needs assessment. So they meet with um, either me or one of my colleagues um, to talk about their own needs and preferences and how they'd like to be supported um, in college. This isn't, isn't a once off process. They get to meet somebody and decide what they think they need and then they can come back and review this at any time. So Lisa's already mentioned some of the reasonable accommodations, things like additional time in exams, a smaller exam venue. We have a big push for assistive technology because we know that students can take that with, the, with them into employment um, and it's really important for us that students can become as independent as possible so that 10 years ago the slide that Lisa showed you um, many of those students would have had human support such as note takers and things like that but we've really moved away from that now and we're focusing very heavily on assistive technology tools to help students to be as independent as possible. We also provide with the students consent some information for their lecturers so the lecturers are aware of some of the challenges that they might have in the classroom environment um, and the provision of lecture slides and lecture recordings and as Professor Colin Scott alluded to earlier some of the flexibility that has um, taken place as a result of COVID has been phenomenal for some of these students and we're really pushing hard to make sure that that flexibility is maintained going forward uh, when we return to the campus. So our strategy and approach then for supporting students, we focus heavily on supporting the transition into third level, level um, that our students are independent and they've independent learning skills. We really encourage the use of mainstream UCD supports and we work very closely with all of the supports that are available to students right across the campus. Um, we support students in self-advocacy and we help them to do that. And we communicate and disclose information to other members of staff when the students wish us to do so. And finally, as I mentioned already, we're really trying to prepare our students for the workplace and make sure that they can compete on the job market with all the other students who, who graduate with them. Thank you very much for um, having us both here today. You can contact either Lisa or myself by emailing us if you have any questions. I'd be very happy um, to speak with you.